One of the best features of the new Samsung Galaxy Book, which I recently unboxed and reviewed, is the fact that it includes the S Pen in the box. You don't have to buy it as a separate accessory. Let's take a closer look at the Samsung Galaxy Book's S Pen. As with any stylus, I wanted to see how it would feel in the hand. Is it comfortable to hold? Is it too heavy? And I'm happy to report that it feels about just right. It, it has a nice size to it, and it also is not too heavy, and it's not too light. It just feels about right. Unlike other styli that I've reviewed as of late that use quadruple A batteries, this is an exception. It uses EMR technology, and it does not need a battery. This is also the same S Pen you'd get with the Galaxy Tab S3, which I recently reviewed. The S Pen only has one button, and it will activate Air Command if you press and hold it. And I think the main features of Air Command are the fact that you can create a new note, you could also do a screen write, and you could take a screenshot. Now I do use OneNote a lot, and I'm sure a lot of you also use OneNote, and I wanted to see how the S Pen would fare with that program. So as I launch this application, you can see that it does work pretty well. Now the only issue I did encounter with OneNote, being left-handed, I do rest my hand, left hand of course, on the left-hand side of the screen, which sometimes inadvertently activates the menu. So I'm not sure about palm rejection on that side of the screen due to the fact that I'm left-handed. But other programs, I didn't have this issue. But when taking notes in full screen, this is not an issue, so keep that in mind. Drawing a line across a screen shows there's no jagged edges, which is always a good sign. The S Pen has 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity, so the harder you press, the darker the lines, which is always good to see, especially for those digital artists. Now, if you don't want to use OneNote, you can always use Samsung's own note-taking app, and it's the first selection when you press the Air Command button. It seemed to work pretty well, but being a OneNote user, I pretty much stick to that program. But if you want to use a Samsung program, I think it'll get the job done. Now, as far as art is concerned, I must confess I'm not much of an artist, so please keep that in mind. But for those digital artists that are interested in this device, I think it'll work pretty well. It's got 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, and there's not much delay, so it really does seem to get the job done. Now, Samsung was able to strike a deal with Adobe to support Adobe's tilt function, and I was able to check out Photoshop with the S Pen, and it seemed to work pretty well. I was able to manipulate photos, and using the S Pen really made a lot of a difference in terms of moving things around. It really was pretty precise. I'm not a big uh, Photoshop user, I'm pretty basic, and I really don't normally use a pen with it, but I wanted to see how well it worked, and it seemed to work pretty well. Of course, there are other things you can use the S Pen for. You can use handwriting recognition as an input method, and it worked pretty well. But I was not happy that you can't really scroll with this pen as you can with, say, the Tab S3 in Android. That's not an indictment on Samsung. That's more of a limitation in Windows. So in the end, I have to say I'm really impressed with the S Pen, and I'm really impressed with the Galaxy Book in general. One of my favorite two-in-ones, and the fact that they do include the S Pen in the box at no additional cost really is a nice touch, although you are paying a premium for this device, that's for certain. But if you are a digital note-taker and a digital artist, I think this is a device you need to check out, and I will put links below to my unboxing and my review of the Samsung Galaxy Book, and I will be doing other videos with the Samsung Galaxy Book, so be on the lookout for those as they become available. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.